Welcome back to Channel 9's exclusively live coverage of this big final between Parramatta and Canterbury Bankstown, the Bulldogs. A record crowd for a finals match, not including a grand final. Previously set at 58,000 by St George and Parramatta in the final of 1963 at the Cricket Ground. Previous biggest finals crowd here at ANZ was in their opening year in 99 between the Dragons and the Sharks at 51,600. So the signs are out, the fans are out. I've never seen numbers like this at a preliminary final, quite obviously, ever. And you do get the feeling, as the boys said in the preview, that this is their grand final. It's been billed as the Sydney grand final. And Parramatta are about to take the field. If they win, it'll take them to their ninth grand final and they'll become the first eighth place side under the McIntyre system to reach the big one. It's a phenomenal story. After round 18, we're down in 14th position and only three points clear of the bottom of the table. Here's their reception. So the winners of four premierships, Parramatta, and the 13th time they've met Canterbury in finals footy. As I said, this Parramatta side, they've taken almost all before them. Nine of their last ten they've won. The Dogs are on their way. Even when they lost that match, they gave their conquerors only a week to enjoy their victory before they turned that defeat into their own victory. So Canterbury will get a right roll reception at home. Thirteen times they've played here. Twelve they've won in 2009 and of course the one they lost was to Parramatta in the second half of the competition Brett Kamali in the side Daniel Mortimer to play Chris Inu to play the crowd is ready to play are you ready this is going to be a wonderful night of rugby league two of the traditional rivals who Owned the 80s and it's Hazamel Mansory on camera is it his last night. Will it be the final game for the great Hazamel Mansory? Time on. The final is underway. The Sydney final is underway. Taken by Mortimer and Kale as it is that's heading up the park, missing the shoulder of Ben Hammond on the first play of the night. So here's Lowry now. Taking it to the 10 metre line. Playing the ball away for Keating and Keating goes, oh my boy! He ran into Hammond. He got up and played the ball brilliantly after such impact. This is reminiscent of Brisbane on St George. Hindmast just took a beauty. Now my boy gets another one from Idris. My boy's down for the second time in the opening round. But he gets up again. Hayne it is who puts it to the right foot. Drives it down to Luke Patton. He loses his footing. Back on his own 20 metre line. Luke Patton is injured in his first tackle of the night. Don't tell me we've got it again in the finals where somebody has suffered injury in the opening one or two minutes of the game. Well, let's hope that this looks worse than it is. He slipped over with his first touch. Some of the Canterbury players were pointing at Parramatta players. But it doesn't look as though there's anything untoward that has happened in the tackle. Nathan Kalis's knees come in contact with his head very accidentally. You'll see it better on the shot from the other side, but as he was going to ground, Nathan Curlis has caught him in the back of the head with his knee. It was the first shot we showed there that probably picked it up. Nathan Kalis, the number eight, knee, bang, on the back of the head there. Drove his face into the turf, got him in the back of the head. And poor old Lukey Patton, let's have a look here again as he's coming down. The knee there, bang, got him. And he is a very sick boy. This could be over for, for Luke. His final might have lasted one minute and three seconds. El Masri is in there with him. And the head trainer, I saw him indicate the negative to his assistant. The general 
on his first return kick reception. Has copped an accidental knee. Well, I don't want to put him out of this game prematurely, but when Luke Patton missed the match late in the domestic rounds, Hudson or Masri was the player who went back into the custodian position and had an outstanding game. The strap is now Larry Britton, Tony Ayub trying to get Luke Patton up. They've done so very groggily, and he'll be leaving the field surely. Crowd, the Bulldogs fans away to the northern end. Saluting Luke Patton, hoping he'll come back. These two medical men here, Larry Britton in the yellow shirt and Tony Ayew, two of the best and most experienced in the league. And they've been talking Luke Patton through this, who obviously didn't want to leave the field. But they've convinced him quite sensibly to come to the sideline. I'll be very, very surprised if we see him back tonight. The opening set of the six was fierce. Both teams have been dreaming about that all week and they didn't disappoint. Ben Hannett was prominent. Jamal Idris, Fui Fui, stood up and took his knocks, but in an accidental incident, Luke Patton now leaves the field. That is terrible, terrible luck. And Yaleen Gordon is Kevin Moore's choice to put out there, so we'll see a reshuffle. He played centre for South Sydney seasons ago as Andrew Ryan strives just shy of the 40. Second tackle then for Canterbury. Patton was taken on the first of Canterbury sets. El Masri at fullback, Yaleen Gordon right wing. So Hannah takes a hit up. Parramatta accept him and put him away. Five metres into Parramatta's territory. They go right side to Kamali and then to Gary Warburton. Kamali, they didn't quite get to him to test him out. He puts the kick high and back and across for Hayne, who makes it look simple. 20 metre optional for Parramatta. So it's taken by Keating. That's Eric Gross. 22 metres out from his own line. Moy Moy's lining up for another one. Here he comes. And again they go in at fever pitch. Not as conspicuous that tackle though. Now Ben Smith. It's his turn. Driven down on the 30 metre line. He's own into the park. David Stagg, the chief tackler. First mistake of the game, first error, Parramatta. Well, coaches often talk to their players about thunderbolts, things that come unexpected in a game that you've just got to get your head around. And there's a real thunderbolt here tonight with Luke Patton getting knocked out in the first minute and a massive change now to this Bulldogs back line. Here's Ben Smith fumbling the ball and the play the ball. But the Bulldogs have been dealt a savage blow here. Yaleen Gordon and Jamal Idris out there on the right defending to Luke Burton. Kristen Inu now become a target. Hazem El Masri at fullback. Great experience, but he's not Luke Patton. Warburton then. 25 away from the Parramatta line. Ennis comes back looking for Hannant and he finds him. Hannant will play the ball, middle of the ground, just inside the 20 metre line. Here's Kamali to the line and back for David Stagg, for Hannah to run around with Stagg. He delivers to El Masri. He kicks for the winger. Good one. I'd say he scored. Good one. He's injured in doing so. We'll look at the replays in a moment. I think Bryson Goodwin may have got it there. And I think you're going to be a very good judge. Outstanding work to read that the kick was on. Eric Groth, as is his want, up and in a long way. And the kick was the best option. They keep it alive. Lovely little play. Love the run around. And then Hazem El Masri from the fullback position. Sums it up. Throws the dummy. Left foot kick. He's onside. Have a look at it, He gets the nice bounce and gets it down. That is a try and the opening points. Well, that is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Not only for this magical take, but the kick from Hazem El Masri. There's Jared Hayne with the knees across the top. Jared Hayne with the knees across the top. But Hazem El Masri with the little kick through. And this... This could be an eight-pointer. This could be ugly. It's been a feature of the season. The eight-pointers. And I think they're going to examine this one closely. Wow. Well, it has to be. Yeah. 
Try for the Dogs and try for Brayson Goodwin. Now, Here let's stay with Tony Archer. He's yet to mark a spot at the middle of the ground. Came in, led with the knees. It's going to be a possible eight-point try. A tough back. A tough my feet back. It's going to be a possible eight-point try. The tackle's on the court. Yeah, there goes the touchdowns on the other side. He marks the spot in front of the uprights. It's a possible eight-pointer against Jared Hay. Yes, and just to explain that to some people who haven't seen this before, when we say eight-point try, the, the important word is possible. The conversion of the try will take place in relation to where the ball was put down. So for Hazamel Masri, converting the try of that man there, Bryson Goodwin, he's half a metre in, but the second kick will be in front of the posts. So it's a certain six points, but a possible eight. It was an interesting comment there from Jared Hayne, who was trying to plead to Tony Arja, I had my feet back, I didn't lead with my feet. It's just an unfortunate collision, but there is no doubting that his knees have come in contact first. Beautiful kick by El Masri, Hayne coming across, and Hayne will tuck his feet in, doesn't lead with the feet, but he lands on him with his knees. There is no other decision there. No other decision, and Jared Hayne, if Parramatta were to win, could well be in doubt next week for the grand final. El Masri in possibly his last game. From the sideline, and he's pulled it around. No goal for the great one. 4 nil in favour of the Eels, but the other two-pointer is still on offer. Well, hasn't this been an extraordinary opening? The first set of six, vicious. We wondered whether the Dogs of War will turn up. They did. They gave it to Fui Fui and Nathan Kalis. El Masri takes the extra two. Andrew John, sideline. Yeah, probably not the combination you would have thought El Masri cooking, kicking for Bryson Goodman. But I think it was a planned move we saw two weeks ago. Eric Grove get an intercept off Jamie Soward coming off his wing. I think they put the little one in behind to see how Masri put it in behind Eric here just to remind him if you want to come up and shut it down, we'll put one in behind you. Just on Bryson Goodwin, looks like he's fine, guys. So the kickoff takes us into the next segment of this game. There's bound to be plenty of twists and turns in this one. And the opening has been quite staggering. David Stagg playing the ball on his own 20 metre line then. This is Ben Hammond, 27 away from his own try line down at the southern end of ANZ Stadium. Roberts tried to step through, but uh, careless it was who made the tackle. Kicking on his own 40 metre line, Michael Ennis, and then a flying Jared Hayne. 35 away from his own line. On report for his tackle on Bryson Goodwin in the process of scoring a try. So even if they win, there would be a doubt on Jared. This is Kalis to the halfway line. Keating working a play at the ruck with Moimoy, Moy, who took, as you saw, two of the biggest hits in the Final series, only, I suppose, exceeded by what we saw in the Brisbane St. George game. Now ready, floats a ball away to the boot of the number seven, Robson. Mortimer's after it. Mortimer's got the ball. Thrusts it down. It's going to Inu. It's out to Luke Bird. He's got support coming. He can't get the ball back in field. And it goes over the sideline, the tackler, El Masri. What's the work here? I think it is Brett Kamali who was caught out wide after this ball came down. And the brilliant way he defended without committing himself to make a tackle. There's confusion in the middle. Idris and El Masri are outlet by Mortimer. He throws it back. And watch Kamali, who is stranded on his own, but backs away, has the confidence to wait for the troops to come from the inside. He saves the try by not making a tackle. And Parramatta's got another problem. Their captain is off the field, Nathan Kalis. And he's pointing to a hamstring. Hudson is with the ball. There's Kalis over on the eastern touchline. As it comes from Ennis, it goes to Roberts now. And Roberts fends away from one. He shows it on the outside. He takes it to the halfway. He loses the ball. Now it's a penalty. Penalty to Canterbury against Reddy. Well, that's 
a really harsh call. Really harsh call. Nathan Taylor still on the sideline. Roberts goes through. He's brought down and tackled. He gets up to play the ball. Oh, I think that's fair enough. I don't think Reddy had finished his work. Pretty harsh call there. The ball had gone backwards. It was probably play on anyway. It's very similar to the penalty awarded early when Ben Smith got up to play the ball. It actually touched the boot of Andrew Ryan, and that's why it came out. But accidental. Hannon, two passes wide. That's Joe Nullivau on for Nathan Kalis making the tackle. And Parramatta, like Canterbury, have got their problems. Luke Patton is off. And the man that accidentally got a knee on the back of his head is also off. Nathan Kalis, the captain. Warburton trying to angle it in behind the play the ball. Met by the markers. You play the ball inside the 20 metre line. Here is Kamali passing at the line. Roberts from the deep and then Ross Stag taken in a good tackle by Robson. Il Masri comes left side and Ryan tries to put a boot on it. But Parramatta appear to have the ball in the field of play. Penalty Parramatta that had a second dip at him. Well, great work there from Joel Reddy. Firstly on helping Josh Robson in the previous tackle. Went in with the shoulder and had an effect. And on that occasion, he got down on the kick from Andrew Ryan. And then earned his side a penalty after he was tackled there, but taken into the in-goal area. So Nullivar, away it goes to Moy Moy, and the head goes jumping back after contacting the top of the head of David Stagg. Keating spins it on to Robson. Robs it away to Lowry. Lowry runs at Kamali, and Gordon comes in to help the number seven. No fear there from Kamali. Any doubts about his cheekbone dispelled with his opening game, but here he's been quite physical. Hain turning it in for Heimars, back to Mortimer, back to Inu. They put a cheeky blindside play together. A couple of metres on their own side of halfway. To the boot of Mortimer, and he puts it down in the direction of El Masri. Out of the southeastern corner he comes now. 22 metres away from his own line. Gordon taking Idris with him, but Idris running a decoy and Gordon is put down. 30 metres out. Centre of the ground. Ennis, his pass away to Goodwin. Try scorer at the fourth minute of the game. Taking him up to 20 tries for the year. Hannah tackled almost in the middle of the ground now. Parramatta fans did not like that pass from dummy half. Suspicion of forward is Ben Roberts. There's a bit of dragging before the line. Last tackle now. Ennis finds Kamali. Kamali putting it down to Luke Burt. And no pressure on him. One try away from being the second Parramatta player to eclipse the 100 barrier. Here's Inu again. Taken 15 metres out from his own line. An injury update. Sideline Andrew John. Yeah, Nathan Kalis has tore his hand from him, so he's gone for the game. And Luke Patton's still a bit dazed. They're going to reassess him in about 10 minutes. Here's Lowry down the short side with Luke Burt. He's able to beat one and almost getting away from Hammond. Plays at 40 away from his own line. The pass to Jared Hayne. He throws the dummy to Nullival. Plays it on halfway. Keating keeps the play going. Lowry combining there with Hayne, they're just outside the 30 metre line, on the last play for Parramatta, they go high towards Goodwin, Reddy is up high, the ball goes to ground though. Jamal Idris is down in back play and really struggling to get up, the trainer is with him now, he may have just been winded looking at the way he's trying to get some air into the lungs, there he is there with a big shot, but he came off second best, he went down the big fella, really stung himself in the tackle as well. And that was easily Parramatta's best set of six with the football. Got an offload or two away, kept the football alive. Some nice inter nice interplay around the, the ruck area. Played by Michael Hodgson now. As Hazem El Masri runs it and Jeff Robson makes the tackle. Inside the Canterbury 30 metre line. From Ennis it goes to Andrew Ryan. Who came off the interchange bench when Parramatta played in their last grand final in 2001. He's lost the ball. Getting up to play the ball. The Canterbury captain gives Parramatta the loose head and feed. 12 minutes 41 gone. Feels like we've been here for a week. So much happening and a great opportunity.
the best opportunity for Parramatta in the game so far. Well, you won't see a sneak their hand in that one from Nathan Hindmarsh, who pushed that football out of the grasp of his good mate, Andrew Ryan. I love that. I, I love those little sneaky plays. So Hindmarsh, you would have seen, packing in as hooker. Robson got a bad exit from the scrum. Now, Inu is out there working to beat Yaleen Gordon. Gordon's got him by a foot. Now he's let him go. And Inu is eventually made to play the ball. Play back to Mortimer. Now to Nalaval. And he'll take it to the 30-metre line. He might do a little bit better than that. Only player in the Parramatta squad to win a grand final, Joe Nalaval. Now it's come away for Keating. He's unloaded to Robson. Thence with Smith. Now with Hayne. He loses the ball. Well, he's fooled us for so long this year. That time he fooled himself. Canterbury quick to retaliate. El Masri it is. 15 metres away from his own line. 6-0 in favour of Canterbury. They had a possible eight-point try given to them. El Masri missing the first conversion attempt. Andrew Ryan with the ball again in close proximity to where he made the blunder a minute ago. Right side for Kamali to go in. Stagg is with it now on the 30-metre line. Taken by Lowry and Nullivar. This is Ennis. And the pass is terrible. It's bounced a couple of times for Ben Hannon. And he'll play the ball just short of 40. Well, Ben Hannon was back there getting a drink of water off the trainer. Suddenly the ball came rolling his way. Kamali inside the 40. The call is loud and crisp from the referee. Hayne brings it back towards the 30-metre line. Robson falling back to dummy half. And Growth takes the run. Running it at Hodgson and Ennis and Hannon. And the ball played for Keating to give away to Hindmarsh. And he runs towards the edge of the ruck area. He's tackled 40 away from his own line. Keating gets it on. Mortimer on. Lowry floats the ball to Berth. He got around the top of the Idris. Now he's got Gordon on his tail. And Gordon makes the tackle on Luke Berth. And this is interesting. Some push and shove. Inu in the meantime is off. Lowry takes the ball and thrusts it back for Mortimer. They're outside the 20, though. Here's Nullivar trying to probe through the edge of the Canterbury ruck area. Now Robson. Here's Hayne. Hayne rifles it out, ready for the corner. And he's got growth with him. He throws it back in. Came off a Canterbury player, Ben Roberts, who I doubt played at the ball. Oh, he's saying he did. He's oh, going to get the scrum feed here. Gee, this is huge. Yeah, the linesman made the call, Peter. I don't think there's any way, Ben Roberts. I don't think he even knew it was coming back. Well, he flinches at it after it hits him in the chest. He'll hit him in the chest, and then he'll throw his hands at it out of instinct. Reddy's got his toes on the line there anyway. He was out. But Roberts, the ball came at him. It hit him in the chest. Then he flinched at it. And they're going to rule that's played at the ball. He didn't play at that. No, no way. No way in the world he plays at that. As you point out, he's just throwing his hands up there. It, it's in reaction to, to what has happened. The ball has hit him before he's even realised. Already had his toes on the line. The linesman's missed that and made a muck of the other call. I don't know about the toes on the line, Gus' opinion. I, I differ from you there. I agree Roberts has suffered a very heavy penalty, but I don't know that Reddy was out. I don't think that's definite. Now it's gone from Burt and gone over to Mortimer. Oh, Moy Moy juggles it. And then he loses the ball eventually. He was more out than Jared Hayne was in that origin match, I can tell you. Let's not bog down. I disagree with you. Well, maybe a bit of justice there. It was a very tough call against Ben Roberts and Canary, but Philly Philly Moy Moy standing out. Just put the forwards in the forwards and let the backs play in the backs. I, let's not confuse things. What would Mick Cronin and Steve Ellis say if you put the front row out there in the back line still? Oh, that'd be filthy. Well, they wouldn't react very positively because that means they'd be in the back row somewhere. So they'd be thinking more about themselves than the other people. With very little push, I'd imagine. So with Moy Moy 
That ball has gone off him and touched an opposing player. So the ruling was correct. Penalty Canterbury. Well, this might be the square up, is it? This may well be the square up. So what is seen is probably a boo-boo with the Ben Roberts incident. This is why the, the top referee should have the whistle for the whole 80 minutes. I don't like this swapping around junior referee, senior referee in big games or at any time. Archer should have the whistle here for the full 80 minutes. Square, square, Mark, away here, Matthew. Oh, Michael Ennis taking the free kick. Hannant will play it just outside the 30 metre line. A massive crowd here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's closer to 75 than it is to 70. There are very few vacant seats that I can see. Here's Warburton, just outside the 20 metre line. Ball play back for Ennis again. Now for Stagg. And David gets it to within 15 metres of the line. A chance for Canterbury to put the second try on the board. They got the first at the fourth minute to Bryson Goodwin. So here it is, coming his direction, but now they change it. Kamali's kick! down in the direction of Idris. It's come down for Inu, who can't be offside in his own in goal. So the ruling was right, play on. Now it's with Lowry. Not a bad tactic, but Luke Burt, a much smaller man than Jamal Idris. And if it comes to a jump, you would think that it would certainly favor the, the Bulldog as Parramatta now work it out through John, Joe Nullivau to their own 20. They come two passes wide to Ben Smith. So Smith is with it. Robson then for Moy Moy. And eventually he makes an indentation on the wall. Taken by Hickey, who's out there for Canterbury. Payne's kick is massive. And from inside the 40. But it's gone, I think, in touch in goal. Well, here comes the touchy. Here comes the same touchy. Here comes the touchy. He's ruled it five minutes. He's ruled it's gone out five minutes out from the line. Now they've gone to the screen. Look where the touch judge ruled this went out. <laughs> and the ball, if anything, would have hit the corner post had it been eight foot tall. But Jared Hayne with a monster kick. A monster kick. Look at this. 35-0. Where does this ball go out? How would you know? The answer's a pineapple. That's gone out dead in goal for mine. That's dead in goal. The linesman ruled it five metres out from the try line. This is the bloke you reckon didn't have the foot on the line. This line's been down here. Well, you, you think the call will be favoured for that man there. I don't think it was definitive, the replay, and it is a Parramatta feed. So Parramatta with a golden opportunity. Here's centre three-quarter, Fui Fui Moi Moi. Playing the ball 10 metres out from the line. Keating goes back. Robson across to Ben Smith. He flops it out the back. Reddy couldn't get clean hands on it. Now he does. Six more is ruled. Zero tackle Parramatta. Growth across for Hain. And Canterbury waiting for him. Numbers in the tackle on Hain. Keating, a long ball. Mortimer short. Lowry stands. Mortimer loses it backwards. Picked up by Robson. Now it's to Nullivau. Nullivau to the 10. He beats one tackle. Gets it to Ben Smith again. The big fellow is five metres from the line. Something's got to give here. Keating then. Dummies to Nullivau. Goes to Robson. Now back to Moy Moy. And Moy Moy driving with the legs. Try line three metres ahead. Get up! Get up! Moy Moy to play the ball. Keating. Puts a little kick in. Hayes is after it, but El Masri. El Masri shuts it all down. That's brilliant by Hazem El Masri. Absolutely brilliant positional play. He read where Jared Hayne was. He figured he was the key man. Got himself in front. Not only made the save, but got back into the field to play. Brilliant stuff. And I think his cause was helped by the slow play of the ball. Moi Moi looking at the opposition. You can't get personal out there. It's to the detriment of your own football team. It just gave Hazem a little bit more time to get in the right place as Ryan on to Hickey. Just short of halfway. Last tackle. Played then by Hickey. And from Ryan, it's found Kamali. Kamali's after it at great haste. 
It's down with Luke Burt. Swerving from the 30 meter area. Take it inside the 40 meter line. This is Robson. Now Smith. Now Growth. And Growth loses the ball, or did he try to pass? Smith gets it on. Keating pushes it out. Malabar's with the ball again. Searching in vain, as they are Parramatta at the moment, for that little crack in the Canterbury defensive line. Ben Smith has challenged it a couple of times. Now, Hein Marshall! My boy is down, is it? Oh, Michael Ennis got him. And it's very much a tackle on suspicion. Well, he certainly looked like he was getting it. And this is where Rabbits, you and I have disagreed over the years. He hits him on suspicion. Had the ball gone out the back to a Parramatta player, the penalty would have gone to the to the Bulldogs for obstruction. Well, what goes against Michael Ennis here is that he is never looking at the ball carrier. He has only got eyes for Moy Moy. So he's got no idea if a pass is going to be thrown or not. I think it's a brilliant tackle. I think it's a beauty. It's an absolute beauty, and it's what you want your team to do. Hayne finding the line. Here's Nullavau. Centralising play. 12 away from the, the try line at the southern end. Robson turning it in for Heinmarsh. Nathan, 259 games tonight. Equaling Ray Price. Now from Robson, it's gone to Mortimer, in for Hayne. Now he searches, then he goes back, he, he back paddles, then he gets it away for oh. Nullabau. <laughs> Nullabau has scored a try again through the magic of Jared Hayne. Well, that is spectacular. We're going upstairs, not quite sure why. He tried the front door, he had a look at the side door, and in the end he slipped through the back door. And sure pass without looking, knowing that there would be a support player on the outside, and it was Joe Nullivau. who came on for the skipper. And the try is now awarded. I thought in the first 30 minutes last week, Jared Hayne actually had too much football. I know you want to get the ball into his hands as much as possible, but he's about quality as well over quantity. He just lurks, pushes, slides. Great ball. So Joe Nullivau. Ben Cummins. Talk to your teams, clear it up. Talking to the captains. Joe Nullivau, the try scorer. And this match being taken in America and also for the first time on ESPN through the United Kingdom. Welcome to you people. Well, Joe Nullivau has got the first try for Parramatta. Luke Burt will attempt conversion of a try engineered by the freakish work of Jared Hayne. Excuse me, mate. Ball boy asked by Tony Archie to get out of his line of sight. So Luke Burke converts, and the game is at six points all. That's according to the script. Andrew John. Yeah, you just keep surprising yourself, don't you, Jared, Jared Hayne? You just got to remember, he's not playing against the Bush team here. He's playing against the best players in the world. There is absolutely nothing doing. One, two, three. Plays through the line. This guy is an absolute freak. Parramatta have had by far the best of the last 10 minutes, haven't they? They look really dangerous. And as I said, something had to give. In the end, it was Jared Hayne who kicked the door down. And we're back to level. Try scorer Nullivau, who's been busy since he had to come on to replace his captain, Nathan Kalis, who's gone for the night with a torn hamstring. Tim Manor has got the ball now. Matthew Keating, an inside ball for Heinmarsh. Nathan on the 20 metre line in an upright tackle. Canterbury persists. Armand is out there in 15. As the ball goes to Mortimer, then to Lowry, now to Inu. He beat Kamali, he beat Jared Hickey. 
They were clutching at jumpers, but nothing was sticking. Played on the 30 by Chris Naninu. As Joe Nalaval gets out to almost the 40 meter line. Six points all then. 21 minutes between tries. As it's spun away by Keating, it's gone to the boot of Robson. And he puts it down into the corner for Idris. On his own 10. Crossing the 20. Oh, Inu put a shoulder on him. Testing the youngster out. <laughs> oh, how good is it? Played on the 30 meter line. Hazamil Masri now running a Joe Nullivar. Manor went on for Moy Moy, by the way. This is Chris Ahmed himself, a former Parramatta player. Couple of them out there tonight. Andrew Ryan, I mentioned. And Michael Hodgson also. He debuted for Parramatta back in 1998. Now Hickey to play it right in the middle of the ground. Ennis goes right side for Kamali, and Kamali goes to David Stagg. And he decides to drive forward on the shortest route possible. Tackle five. And Roberts daintily puts a kick down into the corner. And Growth, he looks up and the blue and white jumpers were coming. He might have escaped a, a bullet there. Eric Growth in a match where so many of the father-son combinations are represented. Morris, Goodwin, Growth, Jared Hayne, Joel Reddy, and of course Daniel Mortimer. 25 away from their own line. It's gone away with Heinmarsh now. He's made a 10-metre run. And that's why Parramatta is so difficult to play at the moment. Some adventurous work inside their own 20. There's more of it. There's Tim Manor. Rectifies the situation by going forward and driven towards the sideline. Fifth tackle now, just outside their 40. At 6-all, the TAB, TAB Sports Bet. Here's Hayne trying to get a... A clutch on that ball, and he's blowing up Hayne. He felt as though he was held out of it there. It was a brilliant take. Who took it? Was it Roberts? Yeah. That got his hands on the ball. It was a wonderful take. I think the challenge was unfair. They were holding each other off. They're doing as, as well as each other there. Roberts just got the better of him. And Roberts still down receiving attention. Chris Armour takes it forward now. Good field position. Just the fourth tackle. TAB has adjusted their market. The Bulldogs are out to $2.45. And the Eels into $1.50 at 6 all. Last tackle for Canterbury. Gamali's kick came off the Parramatta leg. And diving on the ball looks like Nullivar. I think the prices have reacted to the fact that Luke Patton is off the field. They're not forgetting that fact. And also that Parramatta look by far the more dangerous. Every time Parramatta get the ball, I'm expecting a line break or a try. The Bulldogs don't look threatening to me at the moment. Inu gets across the top of Kamali again. He puts Bird down a passage on the left side. He gets inside Idris. Bird is still going. He's still going, Luke Bird, to the 30-metre line. Looking for try 100. Mortimer, Keating, Robson. Hayne, inside ball waiting for Mana, but Hayne takes the tackle of Ennis. He's still able to unload. It's back to Mortimer. He's trying to fend away from Ennis, but Ennis rounds him up eventually. Now it's come away, short side. Robson, Reddy, Growth is with him. Reddy's away from one, taken by Goodwin, flicked by Smith, given to Robson. Two metres from the line is Robson. Five gone. It's gone from Keating. Mortimer puts a back, a, a back kick in there. Kamali taken in goal. El Masri thinks there might have been a high tackle involved. Lowry was the tackler. Well, Parramatta are now all over them. Luke Burt and Kristen Inu are killing them over on that left-hand side of the field. Yaleen Gordon and Jamal Indris can't handle either of them. The footwork and the strength and the skill is just too much for those two young men out there. We highlighted Jamal Idris on the footy show last night. He can be very lazy in defence, and he's still only a kid in the brain, and he's really being pressured out there. Here's the tackle on Kamali. Nothing in that. Nothing in that. The Eels are way on top, Rabbits. Line drop out. Not good. Growth it is that'll play the ball. 28 metres away from the Canterbury line. 
Keating giving it to Manor. He's running at Hannant, and Hannant makes the tackle in front of goal, 20 metres out. Away from the dummy half to Robson. An inside ball for Matteo, who's on. Back for Robson. It's gone to Mortimer. And Daniel is tackled. Seven metres out from the line. Playing it now for Keating. They go short side again for Matteo. And the big fella is put down two metres from the line. Felitti Matteo coming into the game. Now it's with Lowry. A short ball for Hayne. He gets it away to Mortimer. Mortimer flicks it out the back for Robson. And he will play the ball on five. Well, they have to come right, but they've gone the other way after bringing all the troops. They've gone to Hayne. And Inu spins in the tackle. And that is an opportunity fritted away. The previous play, they brought all these side defenders for the Bulldogs in. They had to be short if they went that way again. Now I say... Well, their left-hand defender, Ryan, had to come in and make this tackle. There was nothing over here on the left-hand side, as you said. It was 5'8", winger, centre, covering 40 metres of territory. But the Eels are all over the Bulldogs. They're just looking for the knockout blow here. They're all over them. This is Chris Armit on his own 10-metre line. Ben Hannant, who wreaked havoc in the opening exchanges, now taking some of his own back. Roberts to play the ball. Ennis for Eastwood, who's come into the game. He might be able to do something for them. Here's Ennis going outside, getting the ball away to Yaleen Gordon. He fends away from a tired tackle from Ben Smith. Lowry chases. Bird is there. Idris supports. Play will resume on the 20-metre line. Canterbury now attacking. And the pass goes over the head of Kamali. It's picked up by Hazem El Masri. And the little fella takes it down to the 10-metre line. Five tackles gone for the Blue and Whites. Roberts it is. The little kick came off a Parramatta player and went into touch. I don't know that he played at the ball, Jeff Robson. They're saying he did. I think they're going to say he did. And when you're close to the line like that, it's hard not to throw your foot out and prevent the ball from getting back. You shouldn't. Let's see Ben Smith here. Yeah, he throws the foot at it. Gives it a little flick, Rabbits. No doubt about it. So Bryson Goodwin, his face telling the collective story. And all of a sudden, Parramatta look a little bit tired. All that attacking has actually taken something out of them. The break from Gordon. It's Idris down the far side. They're on their heels a touch. Roberts to the line. And a deft little pass back for El Masri. Jared Hayne is slow to recover. Now it's with Ennis from dummy half. He'll play the ball a couple of metres out from the line. So it's come from El Masri to Stag. They take it back right side. Matteo on Hannant and puts him to ground easily. So Ben Hannant playing the ball. Now for Kamali. East with a decoy. Oh, Ryan ran into a big gap. But he wasn't to get the ball. El Masri is with it again. He's peppered them, he's teased them. And Hazem plays the ball now. 22 away from the line. So to the middle of the ground for Chris Armit to meet the shoulder of Matthew Keating. 35 minutes of the game gone. Six all, Canterbury and Parramatta. Roberts putting a kick in. And Hayne has let it go. Oh, Morris. Josh Morris. Has beaten Jared Hayne to the ball. They claim a try. How's he beat him then? How? This is miraculous if he's gotten it down. Well, he's sure that he is. It will be very acrobatic. No doubt about that. The ball just didn't bounce that nicely for Jared Hayne. But Josh Morris showed more urgency. The kick is good. He's onside. Hayne comes across. Ball stays low. He wanted it to come up. And Josh Morris accelerated the right hand as he will get a better look at it. Throws the right hand out and scores. What about that? 22nd try of the year. What about that? 55 tries down the left side for Canterbury. They were on the ropes, gone, and they hit back. Wonderful performance by Josh Morris to score the second try for Canterbury. 
his try scoring partner Brighton Goodwin getting the first between them they've now scored 42 tries for the year and welcome back to the telecast if you've been in a break taking the telecast exclusively live on channel 9 Josh Morris has scored his 22nd he and Bryson Goodwin have now scored 42 tries for Canterbury this year down the famous left side we highlighted that on the footy show last night rabbits and it's not just the amount of tries they scores it's a different manner in which they score them it can come from the short pass the long pass the short kick the high kick and that's what keeps your defense guessing Roberts and El Masri with the little toe pokers tonight have produced more tries for Goodwin and Morris. It's brilliant stuff. El what a Masri game. has him from nine metres in from touch and 20 metres out. Took two points earlier from the eight points on offer. From the Goodwin try, this one he has brought it back beautifully. So a six-pointer for Canterbury from Morris and El Masri. 37th minute, Bulldogs 12 and the Eel 6. Tomorrow night will keep the ball rolling. Here's Roberts with that little kick in. And I've got to say, Jared Hayne was a little bit too slow to react. Tomorrow night, Storm and Broncos, the interstate grand final at Etihad in Melbourne. And that will be a ripper of a game. Well, I'm sure the Storm and Broncos players are watching this. I just wonder how they're going to top it, if they can. Well, I think you made a very strong point in the preview that the biggest thing these two sides, whichever one goes through, has to overcome is the build-up has felt like a grand final build-up. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be so hard for either team to come out of this and get ready for next week, not thinking. Ben Hammett's in trouble out here, Gus. He's not happy. The Rugby not... League's newest father is down. He's worried about his left arm, shoulder, perhaps. He's screaming out shoulder to the trainer. He's obviously in pain, finding it hard to talk, and he's, he's trying to get the message through that he may have dislocated the shoulder, and that's... Oh, hang on a moment. Yeah. I know what you're going to say. Well, I don't know what the right terminology is, but you saw it. From the nine. Cameron Smith could tell you something about it. A break and back. I'll talk in a minute when he's fixed, but it's going to be a penalty, OK? Stay here. Stay here. Ben Hannant. He's going to be OK to resume. Tony Ahu telling him to stay down as long as he likes. Next time you speak to him. The clock is on our side. Two and a half to go to the halftime break. 12-6, the Dogs over the Eels at the Olympic Stadium. Ben Hannett is OK. He's a bit tender. But he's back on his feet, and so are the blue and white army. Nathan, Nathan, well, he's a Nathan, tough boy. Now they're having some ben words here, Ben Hannon. Ben Hannon, and with that bad arm, I think get gave Nathan Hindmarsh a push. From New York, the captain, get over there. Because get everyone's seen the, the screen. Get over there. Over here. We'll stay with this. As I said to you at the start. It's going to be a penalty. The tackle's on report. Hey, don't you go. Don't you go. You're the captain. Oh, I expect better. Yeah, I expect better. Sorry. Right? An apology there from Nathan Hindmarsh to the referee, which if he did do something wrong in there, it's typical of Nathan Hindmarsh to put go. it right straight away. He and the referee will forget about that now and get on with the game. But Ben Hannon. Looks as though he's coming to the sideline. More injured troops. It'll be a free replacement because it's on report. So that's a bonus to the Bulldogs. 
the fact that Hickey can now come on that doesn't affect their interchange. Play by Armour then. It's Matthew Keating who's on report for the tackle on Ben Hannon. So Kamali drives a pass across for Armit, and the big man did well with his hands. Now Kamali running along the 10 and intercepted but put down by Reddy. Oh, I had visions of wind jubilee there. Visions of wind jubilee. And the Eels heading off for a try down the other end. Kamali, he rolled the dice here, the great playmaker. He said, it's you or me, baby, who's it going to be? Reddy nearly came up with the grab, and that could have been crucial. It had... I can remember that out of origin. Remember the Matty Bowen one in Golden Point Extra Time? You don't have to go back there. I've got to go back to them all. I love them. Here's Canterbury with a chance just in front of half-time. Idris is pulled down by Hindmarsh. Now Ennis behind Hickey. Out to Eastwood. On to Andrew Ryan. Here's Josh Morris off his left foot a couple of times. He'll play the ball inches short. Ennis long for Eastwood. And Eastwood ducks under and gets it away. There's trouble out there for Parramatta. David Stagg, Ben Roberts, Jamal Idris. And he'll be made to play the ball 10 metres out from the line. That was a great tackle by Luke Burt there. They were gone. So Ennis again, going deep, here's a drop goal attempt by Kamali. The kick, the kick, I'm looking at the ref, and it's there. No, he's missed it. Oh, he's, he's missed it, has he? Yeah, he's missed it. And that was an interesting choice with only 18 seconds left on the clock. What a half of football we've seen. So 12-6. This, this has disappointed no one. So just inside the 30 metre line, Ben Smith away for Joel Reddy. Back down for growth. And there's the hoot up. First half is over. So too is the play over the sideline. So at the break, 12-6 the score. Canterbury with two tries. Goodwin at the fourth. Morris at the 36th. And for the Eels, their try for Nullavau at the 25th minute. Welcome back to the Olympic Stadium here in Homebush. You're watching the first of the grand final qualifiers between Canterbury and Parramatta. And we've had 40 minutes of a roller coaster ride that seldom you see in uh, this level of football at this time of the year. It's just been nip and tuck. It's been one hell of an arm wrestle. We had that explosive start. And then we had the injuries to Patton, the injury to Kalis. We've seen some brilliance from Hayne. We've seen some tired play at times from Jared Hayne. But it all adds up to a, an exciting first 40 minutes of football. Now, Canterbury Bankstown, when they've led at half time, 13 times they've led, 13 times they have won. So that's an impressive record for them. Parramatta have only come back on two occasions from 12 times when they trail to take victory. Nathan Hindmarsh then taking the Parramatta side back out. He will lead them. I'm told if he goes through to the final next week, the grand final, he will again be the leader because Nathan Kalis, according to Dr. Michael Johnston, is out for the season. Canterbury's Ben Hannon. He seems recovered from that shoulder injury. No doubts about the record crowd. It's been broken. We knew that before. Kickoff time, the 58,000 from 1963 has been eclipsed big time. With a crowd here, I'm estimating, of something in the vicinity of 75,000 people. Biggest crowd for these sides was 50,600 in the 07 finals. Biggest crowd to assemble for a Canterbury Parramatta game. It's a wonderful scene, isn't it? Looking down on the arena here, which has been reconfigured of course since the year 2000 when Kathy Freeman stood on the podium with the gold and now it's turned into a wonderful football stadium particularly of course when you've got 75,000 people in here and room probably for another five and that's all so the second half is underway 40 minutes of football is left for either Canterbury or Parramatta and Parramatta are giving Canterbury 
six-point start as we go into the second half and the first set of six with Chris Armour tackled down near his own line and Andrew Ryan has wrestled down and will play the ball on the 20-metre line. From Ennis then, across to Kamali and back to Eastwood. And Eastwood is able to get it almost to the 30-metre line, tackled by Tim Manor. Ennis' pass away for Hickey now. And Hickey out to the 40-metre line. Fourth tackle gone, first set of six. They'll, they'll want it to be good, Canterbury. Roberts almost poking his nose through. And he'll play the ball at the back end of a very good set. And Ennis puts a little kick in down towards Hayne. And it goes into touch down in the southeastern corner. Well, let me tell you, it doesn't get any better than that. Nathan Kalis with the long face on the sideline, but the opening set of six of the second half when you lead by six, a coach could not want any more than what the Bulldogs did there. That was a, a dynamic opening. Dynamic. Heads in, boys. Heads in. Ball in. Robson to work the scrum. Then his own end of the park. And growth it is that's able to fend away from Kamali. And he'll play the ball just inside his own 20-metre line. Robson through to Mortimer. Mortimer on to Inu. And again he comes to Idris. And he'll play the ball on the 30-metre line. Idris successful making that tackle that time on Inu. Now it's Heinmarsh back to his 40-metre point. 12-6 the score in favour of Canterbury at half-time. 13 times they've led for 13 victories through the 2009 series. Ben Smith will play the ball now, right on halfway. Play back for Hayne, up a dummy half. And then Mateo says, come with me, and he gives it back to Hayne. Short to Heimar, short to Mortimer. Then back to Lowry. There's that speculator out the back, and it's picked up by Heinmarsh. But Jared Hayne put hands on it. And it's been ruled as knocked forward. And I'm not prepared to disagree with Tony Archer's interpretation. And this is the typical style of attack from Parramatta and what they've been so good at over the last couple of months. There's no real structure or tactics to their play, but what they do is just wait for these little opportunities where someone can offload a ball and suddenly the fast people come swooping in on the action. And you've got your heart in your mouth if you're the opposition just waiting for it to happen. Here's Andrew Ryan then. Taking it to within five metres of the halfway line. Early stages of the second half of the first grand final qualifier. As Hickey it is, who thrusts it back. Ennis away, armoured on. Eastwood with it, putting in a step and looking to unload. And he's still going down to the 30 metre line. It's a good effort by Greg Eastwood, bound for leads at the end of the year. Now Idris striding out, ran into the shoulder of Mateo. And that put him down. He'll play it on the 20 metre line. Ennis, left side play, Kamali behind Hickey. He's gone to Roberts, and Roberts gets down under Ben Smith's uh, arm, and he'll play the ball 12 metres out from the line. Play by Ben Roberts. Ennis it is. On to Kamali, short away on that left side for Ryan, and he's five metres out from the Parramatta line. Played for Ennis again. Now for Kamali, he puts the kick across. He's looking for Idris, and the big boy has got the ball. He throws a ball back inside. It's play on, and six more for Stag. So six tackles, zero tackle, indicated by Tony Archer. East with a dummy half. Kamali back for Hickey, and Hickey to within two metres of the line. Playing the ball, Jared Hickey. On the first tackle, that is, Ennis on to Kamali. They've got numbers, the dogs. Roberts got the ball away. That was great defence over there by Growth. And Canterbury within a metre of the line, played by Morris. Now back for Kamali. A little bit of indecision. Roberts is with it. And Roberts takes the Parramatta defence and goes to ground at the end of three tackles. Opportunities here for Canterbury. Ennis for Eastwood. Back to Ennis, he rifles it out, it bounces to Idris, he holds it in one hand, looks to unload, takes the tackle. Again, the tackle was there for Matteo. Ten metres out from the line, here's Kamali having a look around, and he's taken down by, uh, by Ben Smith, and it's gone to Eastwood, and he's able to thrust it down. Ennis to El Masri, back it goes to Ahmed, on to Kamali, he rolls the dice, but Reddy's got the ball for Parramatta. Well, we saw plenty of it from Canterbury in the first half. Parramatta replied in kind. Wonderful online defence after Jamal Idris somehow got them another six. David Stagg in all sorts of trouble out there. 
as Ben Smith down the right hand side takes it outside his own 20 before being pushed back. So, ready it is who throws the pass fairly high and awkwardly for growth. Keating across the back for Mortimer to go to Matteo. He's able to go back into the middle. Mortimer's found some space up the middle of the ground, but he's pulled down and tackled with no support. He plays it back for Chris Naninu, who is uh, he's been dispossessed of the ball by Kamali, and six more tackles is ordered. Matteo is with it now. He's gone into open space, but pulled down by the last line. Pulled down by Jared Hickey. Players on the 30-meter line. Canterbury's into the ground. It's with Moy Moy now, and Moy Moy is up to the 20-meter line. So he'll play it back for Matthew Keating, and Keating. Goes towards the line, throws a dummy, goes to Matteo, it's on to Inu. And Inu is away from one, but taken to ground by Kamali and by Gordon down in this corner. As it comes from Burt, it's a long ball, a good ball to Mortimer, to Robson. And now it's back on the inside for Tim Manor. And he's 12 metres out from the line. He plays it for Keating, he has a look around. And Keating goes down under the Canterbury defence, the online defence of Greg Eastwood. Again for Tim Manor. Now for Jared Hay. He puts a little kick over. Luke Bird and Jamal Indras, and it came down and into touch. And it will go back to the 20 metre line for the restart. How are you going there, Rabbits? You OK? Hey, hey. Everything all right? What? Oh, you're busting your boiler here tonight, baby. Yeah, poor finish here from Parramatta. That was a great opportunity. The dogs keep it alive now. Andrew Ryan, after two offloads, goes across field. They pick up 20 metres from the restart. Parry thrust, parry thrust. So here's Roberts. Going to step his way through the Parramatta defence line. Morris again. 12 metres on the Parramatta side of halfway this time. Ben Smith, the tackler, on that Parramatta right side defence. Ennis comes back to Roberts. It's gone to Chris Armit, And Armit will play the ball just outside the 30 metre line ben hannant coming back to the sidelines as roberts gets it away to kamali then it's gone to david stagg able to stand and offload back to eastwood he's out of a tackle and he's taken it to within 10 meters of the line oh, that's brilliant by stagg he was knocked out a minute ago he passes from dummy half now and kamali puts a kick in a ricochet came up a pound out of boot hands and arms all over the place and he's ordered, I think. <laughs> Come on, Tony, give us the decision. <laughs> he's giving you the 20 metres. <laughs> no, he's going to, got to play the ball out 10. Oh, where is he going with it? 20 metres. 20 metres tap. I think he's saying he caught it on the full. He can't have caught it on the full. He was towed through by a bulldog and he caught it on the full. Really? I think so. Oh. <laughs> Well, that'll be the, the <laughs> lowest chip kick you've ever seen in your life. And you don't want Jared Hayne arguing. Well, that's highly technical. <laughs> that is highly technical, isn't it? He's but not, he did catch it on the fall. And he's not defending me in court, Jared Hayne. <laughs> Jake was going to give me, give, give me nothing. He's arguing five years for me. Here's he, Tim Manor with the ball. I'm just wondering, though, did Hayne have a foot on the actual try line? Yeah, he, was, he was in his own in goal when he caught it, but he was declaring his guilt when he was innocent. So the markers aren't direct and the penalty goes to Parramatta. Benny. Kingston is on right. in jumper number 14. Just quietly, that's a brilliant call by Tony Archer, isn't it? I mean, well, it's a better call than Jared Haynes. Yeah, like that, that, is, that is brilliant. Everyone missed that. Chris Naninu then to take the free kick just inside the 30 metre line. This is Manor, tackled on the 20. And it's gone away to Daniel Mortimer. Moy Moy, again sorted out by Hammond. But Fui Fui goes ahead. 12 metres out from the line. Play back to Kingston. Now it's on for Robson, shows it to Hindmarsh. Goes to Matteo. It's uh, in the air for Kristen Inu. Luke Bird will score. Luke Bird has put the ball over the line. It should be awarded, I fancy. I'm looking at Archer, I'm looking at Cummins. I think we're going upstairs to check that Kristen Inu, when he lost the football, that it didn't 
touch the Canterbury defender. But the way that the Canterbury players reacted, they believe that they've had a try scored against them. But the pass, Matteo wanted Inu to stay on his outside here. And he changes his, his line, going inside. Then outside, touches it there. Now, if it touches Jamal Idris, which it doesn't, it would have been a knock-on. So it is play on, and we check Luke Bird, who gets the ball down in the corner. That is all good. That is his 100th try, by the way. Only the second Parramatta player to go past or go through the 100 barrier. The other, of course, Brett Kenny. And Luke puts it down safely. And we're expecting a green, and it is a try to Parramatta. So Luke Bird has got his 100. He'll attempt to convert in just a moment. through the States, down through Europe, and in the UK through ESPN. Welcome back to the stadium, the Olympic Stadium here in Sydney, almost to capacity, where Luke Burt made his debut back in 1999, a correction, back in the year before the Olympics, in front of 104,000 people, and he's offline with the attempt at converting his own try. But it's still that dangerous left-hand side of the field. And as this game gets further and Jamal Idris and Yulian Gordon get more tired, I can just see Parramatta directing all their play in this direction. Look, they really don't know what to do. They don't know whether to come up, come in. Jamal's in all sorts of trouble out there playing in on the wing. And in the end, it was easy for Luke. But an element of luck. But it's not a fluke that they're coming this way all the time. And the Bulldogs have got some big problems there. They would love to put El Masri back on that right wing. So, Parramatta back to within two points. Tim Manor it is with the ball, 12 metres out from his own line. As it goes away to Moy Moy, and Moy Moy tries to make a break from inside his own 20 metre line. Kingston waits, Kingston decides to have a run. He went through Hannon's tackle, and he's just outside the 30 metre line. He'll play the ball back for Robson, who finds himself a dummy half, and then to Mortimer. Now to Matteo, who's asking questions of the right side of the fence for Canterbury. He played the ball eight metres short of halfway. Played back to Inu. Now to way to Hindmarsh, and Hindmarsh up to the halfway line. He'll play the ball. Five tackles gone for Parramatta, and the scoreboard two points in favour of the Dogs as the ball goes down the ground. It's with El Masri in his own in goal. He's confronted by Hayne, and Hayne tackles has him. Inside the 10 metre line. Well, Masri just a hint that he might have dropped it, but the referee was standing right on top of the incident. And Goodwin is able to play the ball. Roberts it is, outside the 20 metre line. Ben Roberts playing the ball then. As it goes away to Josh Morris, and Morris is able to burrow his way just beyond the 30 metre point. Back for Ryan and now for Ahmet. And Ahmet is put down on the 40 metre line. Five tackles gone then for Canterbury as it goes to the boot of Kamali. He drives it down in the direction of Luke Burt. And here he comes outside his 20 metre line, out to the 30. And Hannon is there with his colleagues, Idris and Kamali, to make the tackle. It's an interesting decision by Daniel Anderson to leave Mortimer out there and get Folletti Matteo on the field. I'm sure he thinks he can attack his way to victory here. There are plenty of points on this left-hand side of the field. He's got both Mortimer and Matteo on the field at the same time. Encouraging signs over on the sideline for Luke Patton. I noticed uh, as Parramatta rucked this ball down to the halfway with Gross finally giving it away. It's gone to Moy Moy following the growth play the ball and Moy Moy to play at 35 metres out from the Canterbury line. Over to Hindmarsh now. He goes back and it's got away to Mortimer and Mortimer is pulled down. 22 metres out on tackle number five. Picked up by Kevin Kingston. He's gone away to Jared Hayne. It's out to Robson. Robson's able to get the ball away from Kingston. It's found Tim Manor and Manor has scored. 
Jared Hain, I think, was the last passer of the ball, but Tim Manor has scored for the Eels. Well, he was also the first man to touch the football, Jared Hain, last tackle. Decided to run the football. Jeff Robson does a great job in this. Jimmy Mano, I think that's his first try of the season. And he looks upstairs. Kevin Kingston runs it. Hayne sums it up. Short ball to Robson. Gets through the front line. Keeps it light. Back to Kingston. Back to Hayne. On to Mano. So that's his first career try, I'm led to believe. Tim Manor. His brother John. Plays for Cronulla. He's got a battle with cancer at the moment. Welcome back to the Olympic Stadium. Luke Burt to attempt conversion. Adjacent to the uprights, the try, the first of his career for Tim Manor. And uh, Luke it is that puts it between the uprights. What a wonderful moment it is for not just Tim Manor, but for that family who've got that, that worry and that battle with young John from down at Cronulla. Well, it is the first try of his career, and watch him cradle the ball as he heads towards the line. His eyes open up. There's a, a myriad of passes here, short passes, some offloads. They keep it alive. They know it's a last tackle. And when Mana gets the ball, he tries to cradle it like a baby. He says, how do I do it? Do I do it with two hands, one hand? How do I put it down? But he found the way. So Parramatta leading by four now. It's 16 to 12 in favour of the blue and gold. And if he'd have known where he was standing there, Jeff Robson, that ball would have gone out on the full. As Luke Patton comes to the sideline, down there near Andrew Johns, what's happening? Yeah, Luke Patton, he was ruled out 10 minutes ago. They said there was no way he was coming back. He'd come out, he was pleading with the doctor, and they had a, they had a chat for about five minutes. He's gone for a run up and down the sideline. I think he's talked his way in with the doctor, and he's going back out. A courageous effort. Heidmarsh then. Tries to barge it up the middle, loses the football. And referee Archer has called play on, played by Yaleen Gordon. It's gone to Andrew Ryan, who's tackled on the 30-metre line. And it's Yaleen Gordon coming off, and this is the coach recognising he needs El Masri back on the wing. So he's going to bow to Luke Patton's wishes to get back on the field. El Masri will come to right wing to protect Idris, who's been carved up by Inu and Luke Burke. So this is Gary Warburton playing the ball just inside the 20-metre line. It's Ennis to Idris and short passing. It's gone to El Masri. El Masri, a big bear hug there from Nathan Heinmarsh. 15 metres out from the line. Played back for Ennis to go away to Idris, who puts it down. That is deemed as a knock-on. And Luke Patton comes back into the action now. Has an El Masri back out onto his right wing. And you would imagine... And when they get an attacking opportunity, at the end of a set of six, Parramatta would surely go high and test Luke Patton. Jared Hayne, the big, the big spiral bomb, just to, to introduce him back into this match. And we go back to that old saying, in your most important battle, throw your last man in. Well, there's, there's their man, the general. Can he pull it out of the fire for them? Here's Matteo then, taking it away from the scrum victory. 10 metres out from their line. TAB Sportsbet have adjusted the market again. The dogs have gone back out to $2.45. The yields at $1.50. 13390. And if you want to bet in the run, here's Kingston looking to unload. He does to Inu. Inu down to the 30 metre line, but El Masri's got him with interest. They speculate again, and Kamali comes up with it. Yeah, he stood up way too long, Kristen Inu. He was looking for support. It all started from a wonderful offload from Nathan Hindmarsh, who found Kingston. That's Luke Patton's first touch since the opening minute. Just inside his own 40 metre line, Idris is harnessed there by Hindmarsh up the top and Nullivar down low Ennis looking at Kamali going away to David Stagg then to Kamali at second receiver he's on the 40 meter line they come in he goes over the top to Goodwin and Bryson will be made to play the ball on the Parramatta 40 meter line almost 
Here's Andrew Ryan. Now for Brett Kamali. This is Gary Warburton. He's inside the 40 meter line, taken by Ben Smith and uh, Tim Manor. Five tackles gone for Canterbury. Now it's with Kamali, and he puts a little kick over the top, and Jared Hain wants no part of it. Well, I'm glad he did that because we all need a little breath here. Let's just check the scene. We're coming up to the 60 minute mark of the game. The Eels lead by four. Soldiers have left the field wounded. It's still all to play for. The results in the balance. Parramatta going a little bit the better for mine. Look at that crowd, Rabbits. It's a fantastic sight, isn't it? 74,549. Right it's right blown there. the previous record at 58,000 right out of the water. And uh, though it's got some detractors, this stadium, when there's not many here, when you attract 75,000, it's a wonderful sight. And we are into the final quarter of this game, and the next try is ultra important. If Parramatta score it, I think they go on to win. If the Dogs score, they would be very, very hard to run down if they got their nose in front and the finish line in sight. Tim Manor playing the ball on his own 30-metre line. Joe Nullivar is with the ball. Almost out to the 40-metre line. And uh, waiting for Nullivar to play the ball. Back to Kingston. Now for Mateo. And Mateo is having a look at this Canterbury right side as he has done a few times since his injection into the game. Now they've gone to the boot of Hayne, who kicks from just on his own side of halfway. Back there for Goodwin, who's out of the in-goal area. He's out to the 10 metres. He's away from Reddy, and then he loses the ball. And Reddy comes from nowhere to dive on the loose ball. He's down injured again, Bryson Goodwin. So it's with Eric Gross. And he's put away just outside the 30 metre line. That could be a big moment in this game. Paramount can strike here. Manor for Mortimer. Mortimer for Matteo. Matteo is tackled on the 30 metre line. Play back for Mortimer. He, he's going down inside the 20, looking for Inu on his inside. Inu goes to dummy half as Mortimer is tackled. Now it's with Heinmarsh up the middle. Robson short for Nullivau. And Joe Nullivau cut down by David Stagg. Flung away by Kingston. It's over to Hayne. And Hayne almost running behind a decoy runner, but he then spun out of it and came back. Looking to put some space between him and defence, and Hammond makes the tackle. But he doesn't hang on to him. Hayne gets away from him. Hayne puts a kick in. Inu dives on the ball. It's gone to Burt. Burt puts a pumping kick down into the end goal. Kingston! Kingston! He dives on the ball! Now, though, possibly go back and have a look at something that happened with Inu. The Canterbury players are pointing. Well, they're looking for a, a, a knock-on upstairs. That's why the referee has gone upstairs. But no. if, yeah. if they have manufactured something out of nothing here, Jared Hayne going nowhere, kicks the ball to Kristen Inu. Inu is behind the kicker. In fact, all the chases on this side are on. This is where there's a doubt. I think it's gone straight through his hands, hit his foot. Luke Burt picks it up, gets the call from the inside to slide one through. The chases on the inside are onside, led by Kevin Kingston. We'll come back and have a look at the Kristen Inu involvement once again, I would imagine. But if he hasn't touched that with his hands... Yeah, he did. It looked like he did there. He did. I was about to say, I could not believe that try. I could not believe it. What Jared Hayne just did to the fence there defies belief. He is held in such awe by opposition teams now. They don't know what to do when he gets the ball. No try. Jared Hayne can back away and stand still and time stands still. The stadium stands still. The defence just goes into ultra panic when this young man gets the ball. Have a look at this. Jig, jig, push, shove, come back now. Where will I go? Not you, not you. I'll come this way. Have you got me? No, you haven't got me. I'm out of that. I'm up. I'm going. I'm off again. Get out of my way. Here I go again. Now what will I do? Trick shot. How do you play like that? Well, th that's a question that a lot of people are asking at the moment. There, there's no doubt about that. He's got everybody standing off in wonderment at uh, what he's been able to do. But in the end, Canterbury have survived. Still plenty of time left in this game. Good strong there from, running from Yaleen Gordon. So there was no doubt that uh, Kristen Inu 
Put a knock on on that ball, and Canterbury, rightly so, come back with David Stagg to play the ball seven metres into Parramatta's area. The match delicately poised, 16 12 in favour of Parramatta. Three tries to two, and here's Hayne with the ball back on his own 10 metre line. Taken back by Brett Kamali, it was. Yeah, that, that's the man with the fractured cheekbone and the plates in his cheek. Just went down there and give it to Jared Hayne. What a performance he's put up tonight. And getting up, clutching his hand as Yaleen Gordon as the injury toll mounts in this in this clash. And the Bulldogs realise now it's time to, to up the tempo, to lift in intensity with their defence. Flying in now, trying to force the mistake. They've, they've created an injury for, looks like, Joe Nullivow. Well, this was a double whammy. The marker got out really quick from the side. And I think it was David Stagg, was it, that come in over the top, or Andrew Ryan, who got him with a bell ringer. Looks like Andrew Ryan has hurt himself as well. Down low, bang. There's no high tackle there. There's no high tackle. He's just crumpled underneath the tackle. That's not high, Rabbit. No, that shoulder. No, he's only grabbed him around the shoulders. There's yeah. no drama there. Yeah. I didn't say it was high. Yeah. You're starting, to, you're starting to spar with yourself. It's late in the count now. Fourth tackle. Slow play the ball here. Restart. That means that the defence is, is ready and fired up. They should be putting pressure on the kicker. This or next tackle. And good pressure. So Kingston. And the ball goes back to Highmarsh this time. So Parramatta... Setting up for Mortimer's kick. He goes down to El Masri. Back at his own 30-metre line. Now it's with Luke Patton. Who has missed a, a great portion of this game with that knock in the opening seconds of the game. Here's El Masri taking a run and running into Tim Manor. El Masri, is this his last game of rugby league? As Ben Hannant has tackled a couple of metres into Parramatta's area. Now from Ennis, it goes to Stagg, running a play across the back of the ruck, and he's grabbed by Ben Smith and Nathan Heinmark. Just outside the Parramatta 40-metre line, played by David Stagg. Now it goes with Ennis, and he goes short into Hammond. And Ben Hammond will play the ball 32 metres away from Parramatta's try line as it comes to Kamali's right boot. He kicks it, but Burt will take it in goal. They'll get a free carry back to the 20. No, that wasn't the one, was it? Look, they don't look dangerous at all, the Bulldogs. They're trying their backsides off, but this Parramatta defence has them covered at the moment. They just can't seem to breach this blue and gold wall. And that's standing again tonight, Eric Graith. He hasn't tried to throw passes out the back. Like that one, fortunately for Parramatta, that's gone backwards into the arms of Kevin Kingston. Played to Hindmarsh, and Kingston nursing some kind of an injury after playing the ball. Robson goes in to deputise. It's gone to Mortimer, and Mortimer is taken by Ben Hannant, together with Gary Warburton. Kevin Moore watching on. And uh, I would imagine deep concern from him at the moment as Hain goes big and kicks it into the dead ball area and beyond. 14 minutes to go, Rabbits, and I'm just seeing signs that a number of these players have hit the wall. There is a real fatigue factor out there, which means your fast, your fast players and your steppers come into being. The kicking game becomes more important, but there's a lot of tired forwards out there, really struggling. Greg Eastwood playing it on the 30-metre line. Now Michael Ennis is able to dodge around one before giving it to Ben Roberts. I think the next penalty could prove fairly crucial as well. The team can put sets back to back and get good field position off that penalty. And it will be a real opportunity. Patton out of dummy half now, over halfway, brushes through one, finds Idris. And Jamal is tackled on Parramatta's 40-metre line on tackle five. So Ennis will go to Kamali, and Kamali puts it through the hands, and he finds Ben Roberts, and Roberts goes over to Josh Morris. He puts the kick in, it's going down in the end goal. Hayne puts a shadow over it, and it beats, I fancy, Josh Morris over the dead ball line. We're going upstairs here. 
Now, Josh Morris hasn't reacted as though he scored like he did after his first try. But this is a lot closer than Jared Hayne and Parramatta would like it to be. Last tackle, he's run out of space, kicks the football, left-footed. Reddy tries to shield him off. He gets the last touch. No, it's just over the dead ball line. In fact, he goes over the top of it. Which means that the last two fifth tackle options from the Bulldogs have resulted in 20 metre taps to the Parramatta Reels. They've got to do better than that. They've got to find a way to make the Eels work hard off their own line because the Eels, to me, still look like they've got a try in them. Parramatta then, just inside the 30 metre line and a run for Joe Nulliver. Almost to the 40 metres line. Kingston, now Lowry, then Matteo, taken by Kamali, flicks it out the back again for Lowry, back and across from Kingston. It's gone to Hindmarsh. Hindmarsh will play the ball seven metres short of the halfway line. A run for Kingston again. And Hayne joins in. He bumps away from one, looks to unload, but decides not to. Taken by Warburton. Played back to Kingston. It's gone to Nullival, who goes away to the right side for Reddy. And he's confronted by Josh Morris. And uh, they'll eventually ask Reddy to play the ball. Played back to Ben Smith now. Then for Jared Hayne on the last tackle. He goes very high in midfield. And uh, underneath it and raking it back, it's Greg Eastwood who's come up with the ball for Canterbury. The big back rower, Greg Eastwood. He'll play the ball eight metres on his own side of halfway. He's a danger man. Taken by Jared Hayne. Now Michael Hodgson. He's flung down heavily on the halfway line. Hodgson plays it in us, gives it to Andrew Ryan. He's taken by Joe Nulliver. Also involved in the tackle, Kevin Kingston. Ennis to Stag. Inside ball for Eastwood again. And Eastwood is 38 metres from the Parramatta line. Ennis goes to them. He runs through them. No, Hindmarsh is able to drag him down. But they attack strongly, Canterbury. Patton onto Kamali. Kamali is on the ground. His arm didn't touch the ground. Lowry comes up with it for Parramatta. It's with Nullivar. Just outside his 10. And Nathan Hindmarsh saves Parramatta again. Everybody in the ground, including us, took the dummy from Michael Ennis, except Mr. Reliable, who found a way to chase him down and come up with a tackle. Watch him, Nathan Hindmarsh. Through he goes, got him by the shorts, dragged him down. He was the only one in the stadium who knew Ennis had the ball. Yeah, what that replay didn't show was that a lot of forwards would have dropped off before Ennis even got to the line back on the inside. But he covered that extra metre or two. And they were crucial in the end. Todd Lowry now throws it back the short side to Chris and Inu. Making hard work of getting out of their own end. So four tackles have gone on this set for Parramatta. Rabs, I'm thinking if the Bulldogs did score a try, 16 all, El Masri. He would have the kick. Here's Patton running it back to young Mortimer. He and Hindmarsh put Patton down just inside Canterbury's 40 metre line. Now it's with Hodgson. And Michael Hodgson taken by Todd Lowry. El Masri to the halfway line. Josh Morris with the ball. And put down over the top by Joe Nulliver. They're looking very bunced here, the Bulldogs. There's no line at all. They're all just crowded in. Morris had to come in field looking for the ball. Ennis on to Kamali. Patton was with him, but Kamali's run along that 30-metre line to give it to Ryan. Great work, Jeff Robson made two tackles in a row. Got Kamali and then Ryan. Last tackle now. They need a better finish. It's and not coming. Ennis has unloaded the ball, I fancy. It's gone away to Lowry again for Parramatta. He's able to flick pass. Robson was there. And El Masri makes the tackle. That's four fifth tackles in a row that have been tall for the Bulldogs. Moy Moy now with an explosive run down the left side and beyond. Luke Bird steps. He beats a couple of forwards. He beats another forward. He's gone inside the 30 metre line. Robson supports. Mortimer supports. Mortimer's heading for the line. Mortimer scores for Parramatta. Daniel Mortimer has gone over the line. He hasn't pointed to the spot. No, there's, 
They've been looking at an obstruction. I'm not sure. Daniel Mortimer. He had a a mould taken of his hip. And they made a pad specifically to fit his hip so that it, it sat snugly on the problem area. I mentioned the word conservative at half time. Well, he's, he's got better as the game has gone. Goes back inside. Kevin Kingston is on his left. It goes in behind Kingston. No, that is fine. Luke Patton goes to who he thought was getting the football in Kingston. And Daniel Mortimer skips around Bryce Goodwin. That is a try. Bill Harrigan is the video referee on this match. Can't disallow that one. The constant offloading and the speed. I was just talking about tired forwards in the middle of the field. Look at this, the offload, the tired forwards just can't come in and make the tackle. And the little quick man, Daniel Mortimer, backs up to score the try that could have the Eels in the grand final. And it's been awarded. It's gone through Bill Harrigan for Daniel Mortimer's try. After last weekend, he was no hope in the world of playing in this game tonight. I saw a sign out there in the crowd, Bricks and Mortimer. What an appropriate banner it was. Well, here he is, a product of this rugby league dynasty, the Mortimer family. His father Peter, his uncle Steve and Chris, famous Bulldogs of the past. He scored for Parramatta, possibly to carry them to the grand final. And Steve and Peter, part of the guard of honour, the players running onto the field this evening, a celebration of the 25-year anniversary of Canterbury's victory in the 84 grand final. He got hurt after six minutes last week, Daniel Mortimer, and the next six minutes were full of agony. He did his best to stay out there, but succumbed as Luke Burt adds the extras. So let's go to the sideline, a comment from Andrew Johns. Oh, this is phenomenal, Rams. This young man carried the hip injury. Here's a charge from Bowie. We're talking to Daniel Mortimer. He carried this hip injury into the game. When you carry injuries into a game, it's in the back of your mind. And to carry that burden just goes to show how courageous he is. He's so popular with the players. They love playing with him. He's just so tough. Take a look at him, Earls fans. This guy's the future of your club. Moimoy's contribution was uh, incredible. He, he's just put so many different <laughs> little things to his game apart from this brutal running style of his. Yeah, he got smashed early, but he came back for more. And player I'd like to give a rap to, and this game is far from over, but Jeff Robson has been absolutely magnificent tonight. I think he's been the best player on the field, been involved in everything. He's got the football now back on the inside to Ben Smith. But he, is, he has done everything that he could to win this game for his football team as Jared Hayne finds Luke Patton on the bounce. It's amazing, isn't it? The St George Illawarra Dragons so consistently good all season, gone. The Gold Coast Titans so good all season to get into third spot, gone. The Bulldogs, seemingly gone, been so consistent the whole year. Yet this Parramatta surge through July and August and now September is unbelievable. Well, I don't think Parramatta fans are counting their chickens yet. Some of them would have been there in 98 when they led by 18 points to two with 11 to go and got beat in extra time. This will be a very, very long six minutes some long-suffering fans as Brett Kamali again just goes high on the last. Jared Hayne well positioned underneath, takes it very calmly. So Hayne will play the ball just 25 metres out from his own line. Takes it very calmly, then just beats three players. He's ready. Robson finding himself at dummy half again. Peter was quite right. He's had a tremendous game. He's deputised for dummy half work. He's done a tremendous job in that vital number seven jumper. 
not one of the illustrious names, but my goodness, his, his work rate this year has been quite incredible. This combination he's got going with young Mortimer is proving so valuable for Parramatta. As Nullavau is tackled, a couple of metres on Canterbury side of halfway. Down for Mortimer to put a right foot kick down into the corner. El Masri, the ball bouncing back over his head. And Hazem brings it back. A scoreboard of 22 to 12 against Canterbury. And only four minutes of the game remaining. So we're waiting on Ben Hannon to come back into the game. But it's a 10-point margin. And Josh Morris is tackled inside the 40-meter line. Ryan, on it comes from Roberts and goes back on the inside for Hodgson. He'll play it a few metres on his own side of halfway. Played for Ennis, who crosses that mark. Behind Eastwood, to Roberts, to Kamali, to Idris. And Idris then runs straight at Mortimer. Flick passes, but he's found Chris Maninu. He finds Fui Fui Moi Moi. And Moi Moi takes the tackle. Seven metres on his own side of halfway. Four minutes exactly to go now. And that's the desperation of not being able to find a line break. The Parramatta defence has been impregnable in this second half. Robson dummies his way through over the 30, looking for support in vain. Kicked by Patton. And but knocked he's, on. But he's Patton. ordered a knock on. Yeah, Luke Patton got his hand in between the passer and the intended receiver. It'll be a Parramatta feed. Well, here's Robson breaking into space. Keep your heads in, boys. And uh, it was ruled that Luke Patton got a hand on it. And that replay, that last one, indicates that the, the, the ruling from Tony Archer was spot on correct. So Parramatta, 25 away from the Canterbury line with a 10-point lead. Looking very much as, they're, as though they're going to be the first team through to the 2009 Grand Final. Melbourne to play Brisbane tomorrow night to work out which of them will go through from their qualifier to be played at Etihad. So Moy Moy is 11 away and Nullivar running a play towards the short side. Kalis, we're told by the Medicos, will not be playing next weekend if Parramatta do go through. And as the seconds tick away, it's seeming more certain that they are going to be the team first into the grand final. 2001 was their last. Hayne going to Smith, and Smith struggles to free from Kamali's clutches. Burt goes away to Hayne, a juggle, gets it back, puts a kick on it. Nullivar comes up with the ball, goes to Reddy immediately. Reddy stops, comes back in towards the middle of the ground. And six again, signaled by the referee. Joel Reddy did well to look up and see that that was the call. Anderson has put Keating into the game again. It's come away to Robson. Back on the inside again for Moimoy. Moi. And he's upended and put down three metres out from the line. Two minutes of the preliminary final remaining. Keating spinning it away to Robson. Robson decides to have a go. Gets the ball back and away. Another phase. Mortimer, short ball. Kingston still on the park with his number nine. And he'll play it back to him now, Keating. Keating turns it into Lowry, who tries to break through. But Hannon makes the tackle. And that's how close he was. So Parramatta then, with Kingston putting a little kick in. It's a nasty one, but Luke Patton is able to rake it dead. Well, let's stand and applaud here the Bulldog defence, who, despite the fact it would now be obvious to them their season is over, resiliently defended their line there with a lot of pride, refusing to let Parramatta get the grandstand finished. They've still got a minute to get through, but the Parramatta fans around the ground, look at these blue and yellow flags, starting to celebrate. Let's go down to the sideline. Andrew is with injured Eels captain Nathan Kalis. Yeah, I'm with the captain Nathan Kalis. Nathan, how proud of the players are. Yeah, obviously uh, the Bulldogs came out really hard, uh, but the boys stayed solid. And it's just great, you know, it's great to get another opportunity at a grand final. And what about the hammy? How bad is it? You're a uh, chance? Yeah, every chance. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll work on it during the week. Got plenty of days, so 
good luck, mate. Thanks, mate. Played by Ben Smith now. Ten out from the line. Mortimer teases them. El Masri cleans it up. And uh, it will be line drop out time. But there's only 30 seconds of the game to go. So the Eels are through. Moy Moy is celebrating. 1998 might have been a nightmare. But at the moment, they're erasing it big time. Heinmarsch, 259, equals second on the most games played with Ray Price tonight. Three seconds before the hoot up. It is over for Canterbury. It is celebration time for the blue and gold. A grand final awaits them eight years after their loss to Newcastle in 2001. Some anxious moments, though, for Kalis. We're told, we were told by the doctor that he wouldn't play. He's not giving up. And I imagine some anxious moments for Jared Hay, who's on report. Well, we've now had the top three teams after the 26th round knocked out. No Dragons, no Bulldogs, no Titans. The Melbourne Storm were fourth. The Brisbane Broncos were sixth. Parramatta will now sit back and hope that those two sides belt each other tomorrow night in Melbourne. They'd love to see it go to extra time. They have the luxury now of sitting back knowing that Sunday week they will be back here on the crest of a wave. They've now won 10 of their last 11 in the grand finals. Valiant effort from that man, Brett Kamali. Such a brave effort. Speaking of brave, let's go down to Andrew Voss with, with one of tonight's best. Sterlo, it's with a man who took over the captaincy in the eighth minute tonight when Nathan Kalis came off the field. Nathan, explain what you're feeling right now. You've had some disappointments in big games, but not tonight. No, but still one to go, mate. So excited, but a long way to go. So you know, you've got to win the big one at the end, otherwise it's not really worth it. Great combination, I thought, tonight of Parramatta. Flair plus the ability to grind it out. Yeah, it was, mate, yeah. Um, maybe a few of the offloads could have been held back a bit, but, mate, I'm not arguing we won the game, so let's hope it works next week. Nathan, enjoy the week. Let's go back to Tim Gilbert. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Daniel Mortimer, when you were practising, playing in the backyard with your brothers in Orange, you must have dreamt of a grand final. You're in one. Mate, it's, I still can't believe it. It's you know, unbelievable. I didn't think I'd be playing this game, you know, after the week I had last week, you know, but... Yeah, I, oh, I can't believe it. Well, when did you know? When did you know that the uh, the hip was going to be OK? Um, kind of last night. You know, I was a bit sceptical at the start of the week, but got heaps of physio and pain away into it and, yeah, pulled up the beauty. So that's good stuff. Talk us through that try. You are just in the open. Oh, mate, I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, it all happened so fast. And before I knew it, the ball was in my arms. I was racing for the try line. So, yeah, mate, it's just uh, the support work in the team is just, you know, amazing. So it's a great feeling, mate. You're into a grand final. Congratulations, Daniel. Thanks, mate. Cheers. And Tim now with, well, we've just heard Daniel Mortimer, whose career is in its infancy, but uh, he's a bloke who, at the end of 317 games, 2,418 points. Hasim El Masri, the career comes to an end. Put us in your shoes right now. It's mixed emotions. Uh, pretty devastated at the moment, you know. Um, I don't know what to say, but, um, you know, as I said, look, at the end of the day, I've, I've had a great career. I've been blessed. I, I, I some great, you know, made some lot of friends over the years. Um, you know, it's it devastated really to, to get to this point, but I could have finished last year and it was a terrible year to get to where we are this year. It's a credit to all the boys and it's credit to the club itself where it's come from. But um, I'd just like to say, thank obviously everyone that had anything to do with my career over the years, all the fans, everyone that sent me letters and emails and that. My family and friends, I'd like thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here tonight and to um, just be able to play this beautiful game. But um, so I'm going to miss it all. I'm going to miss everyone. But at the end of the day, I can't complain too much. Hasim, you can be proud of the fact that your last game, your team absolutely gave it everything. It wasn't a case of the Bulldogs losing this one. It was the other team, Parramatta, just continuing their role. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing what confidence does to our, to our team. And um, they've carried that on from... Um, well, for the last 10 weeks, so um, they, yeah, they deserve to be where they are. Credit to our boys, we, we've been consistent all year. And I guess uh, to get to this point and uh, lose uh, the way we did, is, it is pretty devastating. But everybody can hold, 
you can hold the head high. Um, as I said, it's been, it's been a great turnaround this year. It's uh, a, a really enjoyable year. So credit to everyone here and all the club and all the supporters as well. Well, Hazem, you've proven yourself as the greatest point scorer in the history of the game. You've proven yourself a great player and a great sportsman as well. Very gracious tonight. Thank you for your time. Congratulations on the career and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I just, again, I just want to thank everyone that had anything to do with my career and, and 40 hours. And um, I personally thank them myself. Thank you, guys. Love and you. a pleasure watching you play. Ray, Hazem El-Mazri, great champion of our game. He hits it. He's yes! got it. He's